Welcome to another exercise for the workbook statistics. This time talking about the topic of simple linear regression, which includes on the one hand the calculation of the coefficients of a regression line, but also the, the calculation of the measure or coefficient of determination. Well, let's get right into it. Here we have for five visitors the time they spend in an amusing part in hours as well their age is collected. And we have here the data for five people, two variables. First task, determine the coefficients of a linear regression line that describes the relation between the two variables. Second, interpret the coefficients and C, calculate the coefficient of determination R squared. So let's start with the first one. For this, we're going to copy our data table from before, and we're going to decide which of the two variables is the dependent and which is the independent variable. Because with regression analysis, as compared to correlations, matters which is X, which is Y, because we assume that X drives Y. Well, in this case, it's relatively clear cut. The age impacts the time in the park, not the other way around. So age is the X variable, time spent in the park is the Y variable. Then we're going to add first two columns, uh, two rows, where in each row we simply square all the X values and all the Y values. So that's the two rows where we square all these values here. Now we, in addition, also calculate x times y, which we also need. So 2 times 32, 10 times 23, and so forth. That's more or less the first part which we need, but we need some variables or some data based on this, and that's we need the average for each of these five different rows. Well, in the first step, we can just sum up all the values and then to get the averages, divide this by the number of observations, which is just divide by five. So that was relatively straightforward. You expand this by two additional, uh, three additional rows. And then you calculate the average for each of the five rows. Once you have this, you can directly start with the coefficients. So I'm going to use the same table. And for the coefficients of the regression line, we're going first to start with the slope and we're using this formula. This formula has first off here, the average of X times Y. So for X times Y, we go back here to our average column that's the 214.2, which we will put here. We'll just show this. Then we have minus average of X times average of Y. Well, that's average of X and Y. So we're going to use those two. And then that's the important aspect. Why we actually had to differentiate between what is X, what is Y and take crucial care about this because we're going to divide by the variance of x. Here that's just the average of x squared, so the 861.4 minus the average of x to the power of 2. So the average of x, that was the 28.6 to the power of 2. If we calculate this, we get minus 0 0.2044, which is the slope of our regression that describes more or less directly how X impacts Y. But about this a little bit later. Let's continue, however, with the intercept. For the intercept, we're going to use that formula. Here we have the average of Y, 7.8. And then we're going with minus B. B is what we just calculated. So we have minus minus 0 0.2, giving us plus 0 0.2. And 
then multiply it with average of x, which is 28.6. So we have this as a final result and an intercept of uh, 13.6458. Well, that was it about the first part, about the coefficients of the regression line. So how can we interpret them? Well, first off, the slope tells us for each value, for each unit, x increases, that's how much y increases. Well, for each year someone becomes older, the time spent in the park decreases, because it's a minus, decreases by 0.2 hours. Well, 0.2, that's one-fifth, so decrease by approximately 12 minutes. So every year you get older, you spend about 12 minutes less in an amusement park. That's how we can interpret the slope. Then we have down here the intercept. The intercept is the value we get for y if x is zero. So if we would have someone who's of age zero, he would spend on average 13 point six five whatever hours in an amusement park. Well we could theoretically have someone with an age of zero. He would usually not go in an amusement park on it on its own. Maybe their parents take them. But it's still a bit strange. So in other words, while we can always interpret the slope the intercept only makes sense to be interpreted if zero is actually within a decent scope of my x variable. So if we consider an h of zero a decent uh, value, then this could work out. That's a minimum requirement. Usually you should also check that this should or works best for values within this range. Well, zero is not within this range, so this might be quite far off from the real time. So the intercept here should maybe not be interpreted, but the slope can decently well be interpreted. Well, that was already part B as well, so let's turn to part C, the coefficient of determination, the R squared. For this, we're still going to continue working with this table. We're going to expand this by one more row, which here is the row y hat squared. y hat, that's the value I get if I insert x into my regression line. So if I go with 32 times minus 0 0.2044 plus 13.64 so forth. That's when I get y. Then I'm going to square the result, giving me 50.481. I'm going to do the same thing for 23. Multiplied with this, plus that. Same with 32 again. So, well, 32, that's the same 32 as here, meaning I will get exactly the same result with 37, so 37 times this, plus this, end result squared, gives me this. Finally, for 19, I will get that. Then I'm going to sum up those values, divide them by 5, giving me an end value, an average of 62.65 something. That's actually a value I'm also going to need in the calculation of the coefficient of determination. For the recalculation, we're going to continue on the next slide. So I'm just going to copy this table. Here we're going to use this formula. This formula simply states this average I just calculated, the 62 point something, minus the average of y squared. Average of y was 7.8 squared. And down here, the average of y squared, average of y squared, the 73, 
minus the average of y squared. So again, 7.8 squared. That's exactly this part here. This was the one from down here. That was the one we haven't yet used before, but still had in the table. Then we have here the average of y to the power of 2, giving us a coefficient of determination of 0 0.1492. Well, what does this mean? This means that we can explain almost 15%, so 14.92% of the variance of y with the model or with the independent variable h. Which is decent enough because we can say if the r square lies between 0 0.1 and 0 0.25, so between 10 and 15 percent, then this is a result of medium strength, of medium quality, meaning it's a good result but it could be a bit better. However, it's decent enough for, well, the five observations we got here. Well, this then already also concludes this exercise, so I hope you enjoyed it. I say goodbye and see you next time.